John Higgins. I'm Director General of Digital Europe. Digital Europe represents the tech sector here in Brussels, but our members are drawn from all over Europe. So big tech companies and national associations in every corner of the EU. So you're, you're really coming from the industry perspective. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And uh, so what do you take, for instance, on, on the previous session? I mean, you've heard you know, Bruce and, and, and the other panelists say, and what would be the kind of the key points that you picked up from that, and how do you translate them into your domain? Yeah, a very good question. And what, what I would take from this um, first session this morning is... Uh, how interesting the journey has been over the last 18 months, two years. I spoke to the education ministers in Norway um, about two years ago and I talked to them about having to deal with the fact that education, like many other sectors, was about to be transformed by digital. But how they reacted to that was up to them. And I think those were the points uh, Bruce was making. Don't be timid, uh, don't, don't assume that transformation is about transforming bits of practice. It's about transforming the way you achieve the results. And, uh, and I think in his own beautiful way, Lord Putnam said uh, similar sorts of things. You know, we need to do things very uh, differently. So you think that we're actually in, in a sort of a pivotal point in terms of, of the influence of uh, digital technologies on education? I know it's very easy for people from the digital tech sector to, as it were, be constantly saying, oh, the revolution's upon us. But I've been working in this sector now for, well, actually, almost half its life, if I can put it that way. And I saw digital applied to clerical and administrative processes for um, much, much of that time. But in the last few years, I now see digital reaching into the very heart of what we do in many sectors, whether that's in manufacturing, in healthcare. You know, it's the professionals now that are using the digital tools, not the administrators in the office. And I think that's, that's the... You know, that, that is really the turning point that we're at in, in the world of education is where um, we let the professionals free, we equip them and we, we give them the, the means to use the technology to achieve the results that they can see they could get using this technology. We don't just ask them to tinker with their practices, we give them the, the freedom and we equip them to use the tools in what is, I think is really going to go deeply into. So you think it's really about empowering the practitioners in the field that what makes the change perfectly well put it's about empowering equipping giving them the freedom uh, the time to uh, use the the new technologies and the new approaches to achieve what the professionals know they want to achieve and, and how do you think or if you've seen already evidence or if you have some visions for the future how would actually uh, technology, you know, having that technology in the hands of their practitioners change the way they do, they go about their work? I, I mean, that's, you know, that is the, uh, the, the $64 million question. But professionals already are beginning to understand that. You know, we, we saw how they begin to use um, video. They begin to allow interaction. Uh, so that they they use mobility, they use analytics. You know, they they are combining all these different technologies in ways that enable them to help learners learn. Now we're hearing a lot about you know uh, technology as as kind of cutting down uh, geographic barriers. So you know there was an example there of uh, a course in Delft on solar energy and a student in some place in Africa taking that course and revolutionizing his own village. Um, it, it, do, do you see a lot of evidence of that happening also at the local scale? So do you see uh, teachers using technology to break out of the classroom, to, so to speak? Well, some, some years ago I went to uh, India to talk to the uh, first minister in one of the states in India. And um, not many people were sure what he wanted to talk to somebody from the technology industry about. What he wanted to talk about was how technology could help educate women in the villages. Uh, so I think this is absolutely the case that um, barriers are, distance barriers are being broken down and people in all parts of the world are able to tap into resources from other parts of the world, which is a, just a fantastic opportunity. So there's obviously the issue of access, right, and, and just giving people <coughs> access, uh, but there were some uh, issues raised about going beyond access, and, and Bruce spoke a lot about the, the importance of pedagogy, and both 
uh, retaining the good pedagogies we have and also developing new pedagogies which would incorporate the potential of, of technology. Maybe, uh, what's your perspective on that? Well, without, um, I'm trying not to, as it were, educate, not use those educational terms in a sense, but rather say, if you empower the professionals to achieve the results in the way that they think is best, those results are best achieved. That, in a sense, is saying allow them to develop their own uh, pedagogies in the way that they uh, uh, achieve those results. Oh, so you say we shouldn't really try to impose sort of top down any specific pedagogies, but give the educators a range of tools and give them the space to develop their own voice. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, there's a sharing of best practice, and uh, best practice models will will emerge, but. Uh, in my experience, every time you try and impose top-down using technology, it is doomed to failure. Uh, let the professionals feel equipped and empowered to take the lead, share best practice, let models emerge then that people will adopt so that not everyone has to reinvent the wheel, but don't impose top-down. Let it be pulled through and then share best practice. Okay, so, so that's one point you said where we can, you know, maybe we can think about, you know, what are the three kind of ways to make it fail, you know, from, from again, your, your experience. What are the, the, be- the worst decisions that, say, policymakers or industry or institutions can make uh, to really uh, make, you know, the digital revolution fail? Well, I think I'd look at, look at it the other way around. We, of course, what could you do to make it success? And that is uh, empower the professionals and don't muddy the message with other things. Empower the professionals, give them the tools, uh, the techniques, the capability, the time, to free, the freedom, the ability to network, and uh, the results will follow. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>